Ready? Ready? Yeah. Ready? I'm ready. I also wear flip flops a lot when I'm not here. You are live. Okay, good. We're live. So, uh, welcome to On Set. I am Daniel Norton. This is Dave. We've got Frito over here, busting out with the Hawaiian shirt, um, and Seth on the Mighty Mixer. So, today, um, we're going to do basic flash photography. So we're going to talk all the, about uh, flash in the most simple terms. Um, a little more technical, although I will go you know, relatively slow, I guess. If you have questions, please ask. This is the, the basic class, so you should ask now. Next week in the advanced class, if you ask me a question that I answered now, I will throw things at you. I'm just going to say it right now. That's the, yeah. It's probably going to be candy from the register, but it'll be something. So if you don't know, we stream now on YouTube and Facebook. So Adorama TV on YouTube and Adorama on Facebook. So if you're home, you're on a date, your in-laws are visiting, you're at your wedding, and you want to watch, you can do that. If you're in way out in Jamaica, you know, uh, you, can, you can watch there. It's great because, like, what, like two weeks ago, the guy came in and he was like, oh, I, I watch you online. I'm from Croatia, and you're from Jamaica. That's almost as far. And he gave you a book. He did give me a book. Where's my book? No Jamaica book? Yeah, I know. <laughs> There's no Jamaica Queens book. No, I know what you mean. It sounds better when I say Jamaica like that. Also, the live chat stays on there now. Oh, and the live chat stays on now. For YouTube. Yeah. So watch what you watch your mouth. My mother watches that. All right. So, anyways. <laughs> so we're going to talk about flash today. Um, and, and I guess what I generally tell people, right? Because people come to me all the time and they're starting out and they say, "What should I get for lighting or whatever? Where should I start?" And what I say is that ultimately you're going to end up as a stills photographer with flash if you stick with lighting. You could start with constant lights and you might use them and they're good for some stuff, but flash has so many advantages to a stills photographer that it's ultimately where you will end up, at least on some level. Um, it's about control, right? That's really what lighting is about anyways. It's not about getting the exposure anymore. Cameras have such great high ISO capabilities. You can walk around with your camera and shoot 800, 1600, 2000, 10,000, whatever they go up to. And you don't really need light for that. What you need light for is shaping and controlling your image. So constant lights, even, even less powerful ones, are good for shaping. And it'll give you like a little bit of a, a, you know, style to your images. But flash will allow you to take control of your situation. Because here I am in Adorama. And you might find yourself in Adorama. And, and you might have to, let's say, make a photo, right? And I've asked Keith. Keith will not let me turn the lights off. I was like, Keith, can we kill all the lights in the store, please? I'm trying to shoot here. He's like, no, we're in a store. We can't turn the lights off. So I got to do something about it. What do I do? I use a flash. That's actually true. We did that. Yeah, we have actually turned all the lights off in the store. <laughs> OK, so actually, I, I feel we, we have turned the lights off. But usually, stores won't let you do that. It was after the It was, it was after hours on some level. <laughs> Anyways, that's the power of flash. So what you have to understand with flash is this. When you're working with a with camera, it generally has, uh, you're going to look it up in your manual, because I don't know if you ask me about your camera. Um, it has what's called this, an X-sync speed or a sync speed. This is the maximum speed at which the camera can be set, shutter speed I'm talking about here, in which it will synchronize with the flash. So this is important, because once you are, if you go over that, you will not get a proper exposure. Part of your frame will be covered. That's an early, people who start using flash always have these frames that have like half black, and they're like, what's going on? You're too fast. You just got to be within that range. So keep that in mind. I'm going to talk about the sync speed a lot. But that being said, as long as none of this light within the space that you are shooting is affecting your shot, your actual shutter speed will effectively be the, what they call the flash duration, right? The flash fires for a very, very short amount of time. So this flash duration, whether it be 500th of a second or 2,000th of a second, or I think the shortest on the pro photo was like 20,000th of a second, even if I had my camera open for five seconds, if none of the light in the space is affecting my shot, my shutter speed is effectively a 20,000th of a second when I'm using flash. So what you want to do is find that spot when you're working with flash where none of the light in the space is affecting your shot. So that's usually one of the first things that we do. And we'll, we'll, we'll start there and we'll play around. We will talk about mixing it a little bit, but I'm just, I'm just going to start there because I feel like it. Um, and should we start with the pro photo? I'm going backwards. You guys don't mind, do you? Should I go by price? You don't care. All right, let's start with the pro photo. We're just going to use this because I just want to talk about some basic first. Then we're going to go back and talk about speed lights. This is probably not going to be the first flash you buy. It might be. Buy a flash first or start with constant. Should you buy a flash first and start with constant? Is a question we're getting online. That's a good question. You should buy both. Uh, <laughs> no. What I will say is this. 
Ultimately, you're probably going to end up with Flash. If you're willing to take the time to learn, I think you should buy Flash first. That would be my, my answer to that question. If you feel like you need to just shoot right away and you're not one that wants to take the time to figure it out, because it can be frustrating, right? Because you Flash, like if I take my Flash right now and I make a, a, sh a shot of somebody here, and I'm about to show you with, with Frito, I'm going to completely eliminate all the light in the space, which means that it's kind of weird, right? Like if I had a window over here lighting him, like why well, have these lights here, that's not going to do anything. I'm going to put my light on this side of him. So when I make this photo, that side of him is going to be lit. This side is going to be dark. That can be a little bit of getting used to, right? If you're willing to take the time to get used to it, yes, I think flash is a better option. Um, you, you can kind of set your exposure on flash a few different ways. So before we do any of that, though, let me, um, let me not get ahead of myself. I've got my camera here. I will try to see everything I'm using as I go. Um, if I don't, please ask, and I'll tell you this is a Hasselblad a 1D. No, X1D. Everything I use has an X and a 1 in it somewhere. Uh, uh, X1D. Um, it is set right now at, OK, so this, has, this, this can actually synchronize really fast, like 2,000th of a second, but probably most cameras can't. So I'm going to set it at 250, because that seems about where most cameras sync. And I'm going to set my aperture at f8. The reason why I'm setting my aperture at f8 is because I think that's going to give me a decent amount of depth of field. And I've got my ISO set at 100. If you don't really know what you want your aperture set at, you're just like, whatever. Um, set your ISO at its lowest setting. Set your flash at its synchroniz uh, your shutter speed at your flash synchronization speed. That's the place to start. And then your aperture you'll figure out based on the amount of light in the space. So I want to be here, I think, 8, uh, 250 at 100 ISO. I'm going to make a shot like this. And again, if you didn't know what you need to get the space dark, I'm here every week. I know f is going to do it. But let's say you didn't know. Right? So it's your first time in Adorama. Maybe you're from Jamaica, right? <laughs> Queens. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think Croatia is in Queens. Maybe. All right, this is Frida. This is for your LinkedIn profile. Boom, there we go, right? Fantastic. So we have what we call the black frame. Right? This means that none of the light in the space is affecting our shot. What's that little dot? Is it on my screen? That is on your screen. Oh, it's on my screen. OK. So none of the light in the space is affecting my, my shot. Um, I'm in focus, by the way. This is Hasselblad's tethering software. If you don't have Hasselblad, you're probably not going to tether into this. You might use Capture One. You see me use that a lot. Or Lightroom, kind of. Um, not exactly. OK, that's where we want to be, right? None of the light in the space is affecting our shot. So. Yeah, if I wanted to use the light in the space, I could increase my ISO or do whatever, but I don't want to, so I'm happy. So now we're going to set our flash to match our camera. When you're using a flash, generally speaking, you set your camera to where you want it, and then you adjust the flash. You don't want it. To, people are going to ask me 15 minutes into this, what your camera set at? I can tell you right now, it's set at f8, 100 ISO, 250 of a second. I'm probably not going to change that, unless we want to for a creative reason. Dave has a light meter, the events light meter. It's set at 100 ISO. It is set at 250. Um, and now we need to figure out, this is the Sekonic 308 SUV. No, there's no V. <laughs> <laughs> no, XU. It's not SU. It's XU. All right. SUV is, is the kind of car. All right. Yeah, I got to get, I gotta get the, the titles right. Sorry, someday. Look in the description. They'll tell you all the excuses. All right. All right, so 250, 100 ISO. I'm going to point the dome of the meter at my light, which is the flash. OK, and it's at 4.02. So I'm a couple stops underexposed. I'm going to turn the flash up. How uh, Two stops, roughly, if I did my math right. What do you think for you? Sounds right. Uh, 8.03, that's fine. We can be a little hot. Uh, or turn it down a couple tenths. Why not? Let's make it right. 8.01, that's good. All right, remember that your meter is going to give you a starting place. Because we shoot it, I'm assuming everybody shoots digital. Because you shoot digital, and because we're tethered, right? we're going to look at our shot. If the meter tells me this is correct, and I look at the picture, and I think it's too dark or too bright, what am I going to do? I'm going to trust the meter. It costs me a lot of money. No, I'm going to change it, of course. right? So the, we're going to use it as a baseline. I'm going to hang it here so that I lose it later. Now, I can tell you what. There's no light over here affecting the shot, right? And the light's over here, so we're probably going to have to turn for you. Turn towards the light, please. Good, sir. Yeah, this is the light. Just like Carol Ann. Can I, can I not use the meter? Yeah, I'll explain that in a second. Okay, here we go. He's looking good, getting his LinkedIn profile shot. All right. 
There he is. He's lit up, right? That seems correct. Let's take a peek at him. Let me throw my, my thingy on. Boop. Yep, there he is. Oh. Oh, you have nice green eyes. All right. There he is. There's Frito. It's not a beautiful picture, right? I mean, but, you know, we got to... <laughs> okay. But, uh, but, but he's exposed, right? Remembering that, remembering that with, this is what we get with no flash, right? So everything in this shot is the flash, which means that if I look at this picture and I'm like, oh, that's not very good, guess what? That's on me, right? Because I put that light there. Well, Dave did, but, you know, you get the idea. Um, it's basically the same. So... A couple of, couple of questions that we'll go over. Number one, do you need a, do you need a light meter? Or, or I guess maybe the question would be, because the answer is yes, but the question would be, what if you don't have one, right? If I don't have a light meter, what I'm going to do is, you got to kind of work it, photography is all about math, I'm sorry, but what I would do is take my unit, whatever it might be, in this case, pro photo, and I would set it at half of its power. Could be a speed light. Could be a, a, a Profoto unit, could be a Speedatron, could be a Dynalite, could be Balcar. Yeah, exactly. Half the range. <laughs> could be anything, right? Half the range, right. Half, right. Then I'm going to take a shot. And I'm going to look at it and go, oh, God. And then I'm going to adjust. If it's too bright, I'm going to turn my flash down. If it's not bright enough, I'm going to turn my flash up. And I'm going to do that a bunch of times until I get the exposure right. That's not ideal, but it's a way to go, especially if you're on a budget and you're starting out and you whatever. I'll tell you what, if, if you have a client sitting there in front of you, you don't want to be doing that. You know? So there are other ways to do it. Um, you could do something like a digital target. I actually have a video about this. Don't do it now if you're watching online. But um, you can go to uh, the Onset playlist uh, on uh, Adorama TV, and there's a video about setting your exposure using the digital target and also other means, testing and stuff. I mean, yes, you can just guess. Does that look professional? No. Is that kind of disrespectful to the person that you're photographing? On some level, unless they know you're learning, right? You bring somebody in front of you and they are expecting a, a shot, they don't want you to be goofing around and messing around. Like if your doctor was like, I'm not really sure um, you know, which one of these tools does this. Let me figure it out. Or you don't want that, right? So ideally, you want to uh, be, be aware of, of how to set your exposure properly. So light meter is not that expensive. Buy a used one if you need to. It's a good tool to have if you're going to use flash. Or, or, no, the meter in the camera does not affect the flash. Or, you could use a system called TTL. Some units have what's called TTL. Often, small flashes, which is probably the first flash that you'll start with, a small flash that goes on top of your camera, has what's called TTL. TTL means through the lens metering. Okay? That means that the flash itself is a meter that uses the camera's internal meter on some level to get a proper exposure. Profoto also uses that. It just doesn't do TTL with this camera. So uh, I can't do that right now. So that's the other way to do it. Uh, I still like to use a handheld meter when possible, but uh, that is an option as well. So you've got a few different options. Essentially, the important uh, points to take here, though, are number one, figure out an exposure, the ambient exposure, that is going to get you no light from the space affecting your shot. In this case, it was f8, 100 ISO, 250 of a second. Second, put your flash where you want it and dial it to the right exposure. Turn your flash up or down until you get that correct exposure, which is what we have now. If we want to make it nicer, we could start talking about position and stuff. Um, in the advanced class, we actually go horizontal. Well, we can't go horizontal. It's locked down. What about, uh, what about this to make the back yeah, we can also, OK, so we're using a softbox, right? So the softbox, one of the advantages, and this is one of the things people ask me. I think I do. Didn't I do a thing called softbox versus umbrella? Whatever. Um, basically, the softbox is, is throwing the light like this. We can clearly see where it's throwing it. If you point your light like this, right? I'm standing here, and I can see that it's still hitting me a little bit, right? Which means that it's going to hit uh, Frito's face which means that I've got light on him. However, from back here, the light's not really hitting the background, right? which means that I can get the background darker, because right now we have a grayish background. So let's see what that looks like. We haven't moved it physically um, from our subject, but we did turn it away from him, so it's probably going to need to be re-metered. I, of course, have lost the light meter. Did anybody watch where I put it? Perfect. You get a piece of candy. <laughs> so we get the light meter. It's right by the register. Uh, I'm going to point it at the, at the, the light source. Dave's going to fire it. No, he's, I'm going to fire it, actually, because I have the control in my hand. <laughs> Boom, I'm 5'6", six, uh, six, so I'm a little bit underexposed now. Plus, I thought it was a little dark anyways. So I'm going to turn it up a smidge. The, this controller right here allows me to turn the power up. If, you can't, if your control doesn't allow you to do that, you can simply walk over to the light and do it, like we used to do back in the day. Uh, 
Uh, actually, my TV has a remote, and I still change it by hand because I lose the remote. Because it doesn't have a cord, and I can't hang it on the light stand. All right. I'm back at F8. The light's now feathering past Frito. I decided to go with Frito. I can't change it now. His name's actually Bob. All right, so, <laughs> right, there we go. Now it's, he's still kind of lit more or less the same, but the background's darker, right? Still a terrible photo, but we're getting, we're getting it into place. So here we are, we've got him, he looks pretty decent. He's in focus, he's got that little beard thing going on there that takes a lot of work to get that exactly in the right spot. You gotta have a symmetrical face, I guess. Um, but it's a little dark on the side of him. Now what we can do is we can maybe turn a little bit towards the light so we get more light in the front of your face. There we go. And maybe we'll use a fill card. Sure. And Dave will do stuff. All right, so we're gonna make another picture. Like you paid by the shot. Are you counting? You counting? Okay, good. I think we're on three or four, right? No? Somebody keep a count for me. I'm charging by the shot. All right, here we go. So I'm focusing on the close eye, since there's a close and far eye. There we go. Now his face is evenly lit. Now we have a reflector card going on. I'm leaving a lot of headroom because I don't feel like squatting down that far. Um, he's in focus. He looks pretty serious, right? So he's lit up with a flash. Simple as that, right? Yeah, you have a male model this week. Yeah, it's good to have a male model every once in a while, right? You think so. He didn't think he was a model until he got here. Got to get those Hawaiian shirts on now. Yeah. That's okay. Where'd, where'd you get that? We'll talk about that after. <laughs> I was at the Levi's store and the, at the, when I was at Woodbury Commons, and they had Hawaiian shirts, but they were like $80. $80 for a Hawaiian shirt? A Hawaiian shirt should be like $5. Trader I'll give you a shirt. Hold on. <laughs> I will do that. I will work at Trader Joe's to get a shirt. All right. So, Frio needs a good picture for his LinkedIn profile, so we're going to tweak this a little bit. I'm going to move it a little closer, too, because... It's always important to move the lighting close. That you can always tell, by the way, like if you're if you're new to lighting, you always put your light so perfect. What you want to do, like the pros, we like do this, <laughs> right? Okay, so why one sixtieth of a second? Okay, so why doesn't the shutter speed affect it? Well, because as long as none of the light in the space is affecting my shot, the, your shutter speed is effectively the flash duration. Right, which means that if at 160, none of the light and space affecting my shot, then that's my 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 show speed. Simple as that. This becomes really important when you want to do like blacked out stuff and multi multi pops and stuff, which we're going to do next week. Next week on set, tune in. Good. There we go. We didn't use the fill card this time, but we got a better angle on the light. He's looking pretty good, right? Check and make sure it's in focus. I'm like paranoid about focus. So uh, yeah, he's looking pretty good. Should we use the fill card or not? That's really our choice, right, as a, as a, as a photographer. How will I tell you? Oh, yeah, silver. You want to do silver? Oh, let's do silver. Let's do both. Let's do both. It's like that commercial where the little girl says that. That became a meme. No, nobody knows what I'm talking about? We must always choose a obscure, one obscure thing for me to say each time. This is gonna be tricky that. Okay, that's one. And then I'm gonna do a second one. Changing my composition slightly. Oops. I took that picture a little bit faster. See, he seemed, he seems, he's got the, he's like, he's hmm. He's not, he's not breathing. Listen, this is tough being up here. For you, very serious. He's a serious guy. Okay. So, we got two different ones. Not that much of a difference. Which one's the second one? The silver? The, if we get the modeling light on. Which is, is Let's get the modeling light. So, some flashes, mostly studio style flashes, have what's called a modeling light. Your modeling light is for models. If you're not using a model, you cannot use the modeling light. It's simple as that. I'm sorry, no. Okay, so the modeling light is simply so that you can aim the strobe. Yes, you could probably shoot by it if you really wanted to, but I gotta say that if you're gonna spend $1,995 for this flash, to use that modeling light to shoot with is probably not the right thing to do. So what we can do is we can aim it. So especially if you're using, let's say, a reflector and we have to bounce back light, 
Dave can now see it better. Ooh, fancy. Okay. Hi. So I turned on the uh, automatic level or whatever it is inside the camera, and I do not know how to turn it off. So it's <laughs> so now I feel bad every time I'm taking a picture because it's not level. I can tell you right now it's not level. Okay, so he looks good. Dave's got the silver reflector action going on. You can see it right there in his eye. Peter's looking happy. He's like, eh. so there you go, right? Flash, control, right? Could we do this with a constant light source? Yes. What would be the problems? Go back in time two weeks to constant light versus flash, and I cover that, so you can watch that later. Right? Was it two weeks ago? Yeah, so I do talk a lot about that. Okay, questions about this so far? This is, by the way, what they call a monolight. I kind of jumped right into this because, hey, why not? So I'm going to go through this a little bit. All right, this is a Profoto B1X. B1X is a battery-powered monolight, right? The softbox on the front. So what a monolight means, being a monolight means, what does being a monolight mean to you? What a monolight means is that my entire unit is self-contained, right? Whether it's battery powered or you plug it into the wall, this is my unit. The flash tube is in here, so are the capacitors that hold the power, right? That makes it a monolight, mono being Latin for, or Greek or something for one. Mono is also something that you usually get in high school. I wasn't popular enough to have that. All right. And there would be no power pack, right. It's important to note that this happens to be a battery-powered monolight. Not all monolights are battery-powered. The vast majority of them you just plug into the wall, OK? This just happens to be a battery-powered one because that's how I roll. OK. Your other option when dealing with larger flash is what they call a pack and head type system. Again, I'm using a battery-powered system. It doesn't have to be battery-powered. With a pack and head type system, this is the, B, the Profoto B2. A good option of a non-battery powered version of this would be like the Profoto Acute. Essentially, your capacitors are in a pack, right? Then you have separate heads that have the flash tubes, which are connected via a cable. Now, there's advantages and disadvantages to each kind of system. Generally speaking, with a, with a pack and head system, your actual heads are much, much lighter. Right? which means that if I have to boom it, it's also smaller if I have to put it somewhere. Right? This, is, this is an advantage. Also, generally speaking, not in this case, but uh, the pack systems have um, more power or can have more power. So for instance, a Provoto Acute that I have is 2,400 watt seconds. This is 500. And the, the, even the D2s are only 1,000. So you can put more juice out of them, generally speaking. Disadvantage. Right. It's got to have a wire, which means that if I've got a light and I want to put it back there with you guys, and my pack's up here for because I have another light, I got to run cables all the way to you, right? There's an advantage that the controls are all in one space, I guess. But nowadays, a lot of them have remotes, so model lights become very efficient because I can take my Profoto B1X and I could put it out there in the store, right? I could light for you out there. You don't believe me? Should we do it? Dave's gonna see. Sometimes they have to look because sometimes Dave just says no. Just take a stand. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can take a stand. Do you think it's powerful enough? We'll get the it might be. Reflector. Yeah, we're gonna do that. Dave's gonna set that up while I do something else. I don't know where that is. Okay. Oh, no, Dave. No, it's it's in there. Yeah. It's in there. Yeah. Okay. So, this B2 pack, by the way, can handle two uh, heads, <laughs> thus uh, have the ability to to do that. So again, control, right? Let's say, for instance, I wanted to light Fredo from far away, right? With a flash, because it's so powerful, I can do that. So this is a magnum reflector. I can't believe we're off course already. We're only like five minutes into this thing. Yeah, I do do go on tangents. Oh, we're half an hour. It's time to mess around. All right, good. Dave's going to take that out there. I guess turn it up all the way. That's probably a place to start, right? Here's the light meter. All right. I am going to meter. Where, where am I, what am I doing? Let's go. That's a good spot for it, I guess. Do you get paid more if you use the modeling light? Do you get paid more if you use the modeling light? Absolutely. <laughs> Especially when you explain it to the client. Now, we're going to light from out here. 
<laughs> oh, wow. Oh. What are you okay. Uh, 8.06. What? That's not too shabby. Let me turn it down a little bit. All right, there you go. At full 10? That was at full power, yeah. Full power. How you feeling? Pretty good, man. Huh? That's good. All right. It's always important to meter and press the button a lot around the clients. They feel like it's important if you do that. OK, so you can look off towards the audience like you're a star. Remember, I am set at F8, 250, 100 ISO. Right? That doesn't change. Here we go. Is this going to work? We don't know. We're going to try it. All right, here we go. Feeling it? Frida's feeling it. All right. Let's see. There he is. Wow. Wow. What is that shadow? Who knows? And frankly, who cares? That is this. Which actually is good, because I was thinking, everybody in the front rows, raise up your hands. Yes. There we go. Let's do it. Hold on. Is this going to do this? Let's go and try it. I don't know if it's going to work or not. We're going to try. Oh, should I move the light? OK, we're getting a little bit of a, of a breakup pattern. See the background pattern? You guys just did that. That's called a cookie, and that's for another day. <laughs> OK, so what happened here? Here I am in Adorama. I've, I've removed all the light. Remember, watch. I'll turn my flash off. You don't believe me. Don't waste a good look for this one. OK, here we go. Boom, nothing, right? Black frame. Turn the flash on. Back, right? Simple as that. Power of flash. I can do that in, uh, let's say, a, a basketball court, or I'm outside at night and I want to shoot sports. Because remember, effectively, my shutter speed is my flash duration when I'm using the flash, which means that even at this high power of this thing, it's like 2,000, 2,500 of a second. So here I am at ISO 100, able to freeze action outside at night, you know, because I have the power of the flash. Thanks, Dave. You can go for it. Okay, cool. That worked. We, that was unscripted. <laughs> that was a new one. Yeah, there we go. That's a new one. You will see that again, right? Listen, I barely got them to put their hands up. <laughs> this is a New York audience. I was going to actually, whenever they put their hands up, I was going to have them go into their pockets, but then nobody did it. All right, so <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. Okay, so because I'm going backwards, now we're rolling back to small flash. So I'm going to talk about this for a little bit. This is the Flashpoint uh, Zoom Lion Lithium Ion. Okay, this is an inexpensive flash. Dare I say cheap? I don't know how much it costs because I kept getting the price wrong last time. 150 bucks. Yeah, 100 bucks. You know, not 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 that expensive. It has a lithium ion battery in it. You know, you can get a version of it that uses double A's. Um, of course, obviously, using AA batteries, it's going to recycle much slower. That's basically your trade-off. This little flash can overpower all the light in the space. I know. It's crazy. So here I am, right? I'm at, what am I at? F8, right? Right? 100 ISO, 250 of a second. If I take this little baby flash and I put it on top of my camera, That's right. I spent all my money on the camera, so I'm going to put a cheap flash on top. All right, so let's make sure it works. There we go. It worked. Oh, done. OK, I told you. <laughs> right? 100 ISO, F8, 250 of a second, right? Inexpensive flash. I've, I've overpowered the light in the room. Frito did not believe that that was going to be the case. That's why he's making that face. He's like, this isn't going to work. All right. That was easy. I am at, what am I at? One eighth power. Yeah. One eighth power. Why? I don't know how to set the power on this. I just put it there. <laughs> okay, so, but anyways, I was pretty close. Let me do another shot. Yeah, we'll start at one eighth. That's always a good place to start. 
All right, so there we go. I'm further back, so it's probably going to be a bit darker. There it is, yep. Why is it darker? I'm further away, right? The distance of the flash to the subject is going to control the amount of power. It's called the inverse square law, right? This is important when you're using flash. The closer you are, the brighter it is, right? It's easy as that. The further away you are, the darker, right? Easy as that. There's a whole formula to it. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> I mean, does it? I mean, OK. So we're not going to want to use a flash on the camera. Using the flash on the camera generally doesn't look that good. Although I guess after I just said that, I should probably get a shot that looks decent with the flash on the camera. So let's do that. How can we do that? This is not a speed light class, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. But if we bounce the flash or add a modifier to it, we can make it larger, which will make it a little bit more gentle and nicer. Um, should we bounce it, maybe? We'll do that off camera. Let's bounce it. I'm going to bounce it off the, uh, the card. Yeah, Dave's got the roof right there, the ceiling. Um, we should probably meter it. We're going to need assistance then. Can you grab the light meter and meter this? You don't have your glasses, can you? Yeah. You know how to do it? Well, all right. You press that button and then just point it at the light, which is going to be the card. Get it right up to his face. Yeah, right up to his grill. Yep. All right, here we go. I'm going to test it. Like I said, how do you do that by here? Boom. All right, what, what, what does it read? Mm, nothing. <laughs> okay, F nothing. F4. F4, okay, so I'm going to give it a little more juice. OK, so it's F4, so I'm going to go up to half power. Why half power? Because that's two stops. Was that F8? Why am I looking at the picture? See, I looked at the computer. I'm like a, I'm like a, a Pavlov's dog thing going on there. All right, so All right, here we go. Here we go. You ready for you? It's, it's, it's unclear if you're ready or not. Look towards me a little bit. That's it. Yeah, there, there just like a perfect. There he is, right? A little bit nicer. We control the direction of light. He's looking good. It's still not going to be great, right? We still have a bit of a hard shadow. Yeah, it's not the plastic card inside the speed light. The plastic card inside the speed light. Does this have that? Must have it. I'm looking at it. I bite my fingernails. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So inside of a speed light, you have two, generally two little doodads. You have this one. This is you draw a smiley face on this, so people look at it, or a bird. You can look at the bird. That's what you do with that one. This one here is the wide angle diffuser. This makes your flash shoot wider, right? What this actually does, by the way, this one here, is it's supposed to give you a little catch light. It really does nothing. <laughs> actually, a better thing is to put your business cards here, because then you always have them. And then when you give, you give a business card to somebody, you're done. OK, nobody uses those things. Seth uses them. Actually, what it is good for is a flag. I use it for a flag a lot. But it's supposed to give a catch light, but nobody cares about that. Did we get that shot already? No. Oh, yeah. Let, let's do this. Let's put it here, Dave. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why I'm shooting with a speed light all of a sudden. That should, that should work, right? Yeah, that's kind of awesome. Oh, ma'am. Ma'am. That's why she didn't get up. She's been here before. She knows how that works. We have a complex system here. Uh, whoa, that doesn't seem right. Oh, I'm not hitting it. There we go. All right, I'm looking. There you go. Perfect. Believe it or not, yeah, it's at F8. There you go. I can see it through the camera. It's weird, right? You can see it right through the camera. And there he is, right? A little side lit. He's looking a little uh, in, in thought, right? He's looking down like he's on his computer. He's probably checking his phone while we're doing that, taking a long time. But the point here is that, yeah, I started off with the $2,000 flash because, hey, would, who wouldn't, right? But even a little tiny flash gives you that power. Now, I chose a manual flash um, because this is what they handed me. But I'll say I did it on purpose um, because if you don't have a light meter, right? Because here I am saying, buy this $100 flash, and then your light meter is going to add to that, right? So if you're on a budget, maybe you don't have that. These flashes always list what's called a guide number. So I want to get into that a little bit. So on your box, and sometimes in the name of the product, but not in the case, this case, is, I think the Sonys are all named by their guide number, I think, right? And the Fujis. On the box is some specs. 
Normally, I don't read instructions, but here it's a pretty good idea. GN, which is great for somebody who doesn't know anything about Flash to just write GN, because of course you should know what that is. Guide number, right? 127 feet, 34 meters, at ISO 100, 200 millimeter zoom. What does that even mean? Nobody really knows. <laughs> if you divide your guide number, well, I'm going to do feet because, you know, I'm from New York. Um, if you divide your guide number by 10, or by the distance usually, then you get your f-stop. I always say 10 because it's easier to do the math. So at 10 feet, at full power, this would be 12 point, uh, f12.7 uh, with the zoom at uh, 200. Right? Does that make sense? So my guide number is 127. I measure my distance. Right? You bust out the ruler. Who doesn't have a ruler? Right? You break out your ruler. Oh, you go like this. Right? Um, you measure. You set the camera. We're going to do it this way, so we're going to see if this works. We're really putting that under pressure here. We'll see if this is actually accurate. Do we have something to measure? Actually, we know that a C-stand arm is 48. Oh, you have a ruler? Tape measure? Don't count me on this. Oh, Seth may have something. Don't count on me on this. Does anybody have a tape measure in the audience? I got it. You got one. Thank you. See that? What you got? Tape measure? Good man. I'm not giving this back. All right, here we go. We're going to measure this. Hold that. You can keep that. No, not really. I don't think we can do 10 feet. Let's do five feet. That's a pretty easy math, right? It should do four. Hold that against your nose. You don't actually have to hold it against your nose, but it's fun. Do you want to go to the side one? Yeah. You want to go over here? Oh, we're going to use it on the off camera? Yeah. Oh, we're going off camera with it. Oh, two things at once. All right, let's go 60 inches. All right, that's exactly the length of your thing. Oh, I told you to hold on to it, man. Yeah, you did. All right. We have now moved it 60 inches away, which is five feet. Who has a calculator? Every phone on earth. Every phone on earth. Phone. So we're going to divide 127 by five, right? Which is 25-ish. That's a lot. That's at full power, right? So then we'll do some math backwards. What? Yeah, we'll do that because they don't give it to us any other way. I'm going to say, sorry, Flashpoint. I'm not sorry to Flashpoint. Cheap flashes, by the way, be on the lookout for this. Always give their guide number with the head zoomed at 200. Nobody zooms their head at 200. If you look at an icon, the guide number is, say, like 60, but it's based on a 35 millimeter zoom. So keep that in mind. When you zoom the head in, it's going to be more powerful. So just do, when you're doing your math, figure that out. Don't be fooled by the, uh, the weird math that they do. It's actually magnified. Yeah, it's magnified. I don't know what that means. I know what magnified means, but I don't know what, what context you were saying that. Mm -hmm. it's not right, I got you. I, I, it's a reverse. Yes, I get you. All right. It is brighter at 200 than it is at. Uh, so we're zooming the head, hopefully. Okay. Did we zoom it to 200? We've, zo oh, we've zoomed the head to 200. Okay. We have set the camera. Actually, I don't think I can go to 25. This is a touch screen. Oh, F27. Look at you. There's 22 and there's 27. Let's do 27. 22 and a half. 22. All right. Now, because I'm doing that, and this is here. Now, what I am going to do here is, 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 so this might look a little confusing. I'm going to put the flash on my camera, but it is now acting as a transmitter for the other flash. This has a radio built in for no extra charge. Um, so when I fire this guy, that one fires. You see that? Nothing up my sleeve. Good. All right, we're doing it. All right, we're doing it. Ready? You should probably look at it. Yeah, there we go. Not right at it, but you know, in the general direction. All right, what do you think? What do you think? Is it going to work? Math has never failed me yet. That's not true. It fails me every time I try to do carpentry. All right. So, nothing happened for some unknown reason, or it's way too dark. What does that mean? It dropped power. Let's try it again. Something happened. You feel like it was full power as well. Yeah, it didn't feel full power. That flash was like, nah. There we go. There it is. There you go. What do you know? OK, so what happens when you have an inexpensive flash, right? And you don't have the, the budget to buy a, a, a light meter at this point, and you've got your client there, and you don't want to shoot a bunch of pictures and look like you don't know what you're doing? 
you make them put a tape measure to their nose. Easy as that. I mean, come on. <laughs> you can actually, you can count floor tiles. You get used to it. I mean, that's kind of how I do it. Right. I walk. Walking is the usual, the best way. You know, you kind of know your pace. So you, at their spot, you just bring your stand out, right? You make sure you do that walk when you do it. It's important. Yeah, he's looking pretty good there. You look good with the little off-camera flash action. There he is. He's finally happy. He's like, yeah, flashpoint. You know why he was happy? He thought it wasn't going to work. He was like, this is going to work. So there's no way that's going to work. All right. That's it, right? Guide number. Simple as that. Now, I don't think this lists flash duration, does it? I don't know why I did that. Like, that was supposed to be a little... <laughs> You're focusing with your arm. Yeah, it's focusing with my arm. Check the side. Ba, 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 ba. OK, actually, power source. Nope. It does not say. Check the side. I'm checking the side. Oh, no, flash duration. 300th of a second to 20,000th of a second. Wow. But we're at full power, so what does that mean? It's 300, because generally your flash duration is its uh, shortest when you're all the way down on power, and it's longest when you're at uh, when you're full power. So 300th of a second, right? Which is action stopping, right? Now, to make a point, because we're at F25 or 22, I can probably go, I don't know, to a thirtieth of a second. I'll turn this off for a second. If I shoot at a thirtieth of a second at F22, 100 ISO, I'm going to do it like this. Jeez. <laughs> right? Black frame, right? Why is there, oh, no, I turned it off. That was good observation. Why is the frame black? Because none of the light in the space is affecting my shot. Keep that in mind. I know that like people that, are, especially when they're learning, they fixate on exact numbers. And I'm only telling you the numbers so you kind of can see what we're doing. The idea here is that we're just setting our camera at a point where the available light is not affecting our shot. Does it come in at all, even with like a no, little bit? No, you've got, you've got well over. I got tons of, OK, I'm going to go all the way down to a 15th of a second. No, I'm going to go to an eighth of a second. Why an eighth of a second? I'm going to show you. OK, one eighth of a second, still black, right? That's very slow, right? Eighth of a second, you're definitely going to have camera shake, right? He just gave me two stops of exposure compensation right there. So we're two stops underexposed. So one eighth of a second, that's definitely blur zone, right? But because the flash is firing at a 300th of a second, if I can believe the numbers on the box, and so far they have been pretty accurate, go flash point. I should be able to freeze even my slow hand. Oh, of course, I should turn the flash on. Let me do that again. Nobody saw that. <laughs> you can cut that part of the video. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What happened? Went back to a 16th? Oh, yes. These flashes are very reliable. All right, here we go. I think there's like a Yeah, it has an auto battery savey. Ready? Well, I wasn't talking to you, but yes. Okay, there he is. He's back, right? Right? Sharp. Why is it sharp? The flash duration is 1 300th of a second, which means it's fast enough to stop action in general. I'm going to have you move. Can you, can you do this? Can you move? You're just going to go like this. You're going to go. No, no, you're going to sit there. And when we go to take the picture, you're going to go like this. You're going to go. Yeah. That's, 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 that's enough movement to get some blur, right? I'm not going to go crazy. It's only a 300th of a second. And move. Oh, that was pretty nice. I like that little eyeball move. Right? We got moved. And he's sharp. Right? He's sharp even though he's moving. Why? Because it's shooting at a 300th of a second. What's the camera set at? F22. Sorry. ISO 8. Eighth of a second. That's right. I'm just pointing at it. There's nothing on there. These are actually my family pictures from like flipping through them. So. Eighth of a second, right? Not going to watch. And just in case you think Frito's cheating, I'll move the camera. All right, so stay still. They don't trust you. You stay still. Here we go. All right. I move the camera. Still frozen, right? Because flash duration, right? That's key. Now, if he moves really fast, it's probably going to have some blur because, frankly, 300th of a second is not that fast, right? So this one, you're going to go like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got to move your hand. Because I don't want to move your face that fast because you might break your neck. 
You're going to like Vogue. You ready? And go. Oh, I think I missed it. Oh, no, I got it. Yeah, and he's still frozen. He's got a little bit, little bit right here of the edge, but not too bad. That's pretty frozen. He was moving, right? And what am I set at? Eighth of a second. Flash duration. This is key. It's one of the main reasons why flash is a superior tool than, let's say, constant lights. If we were shooting with constant lights, in order to get F25 at ISO 100 at 250, well, 300th of a second, I guess, is the flash duration, that's a whole lot of light, right? I would, that's actually brighter than daylight, because daylight is 16, 100, 250, yeah. roughly. Or 100. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you do sunny 16. Yeah. yeah, sunny 16, look it up. Anyways, not right now, though, while you're watching this. Questions, thoughts, concerns? Are we seeing the power of flash, or it's completely confusing? It's confusing. Okay, that's, a, that's all right. We, uh, you know, that's what we're here for. Okay, so that's using the cheap flash. Let's, put, let's make it nicer, though, right? Because, of course, you're saying, well, yeah, Dan, I can get this flash. It's very inexpensive, but it doesn't look that good. I mean, Frito's a handsome guy. You're not doing a very good job here. So let's put a softbox on it. So now we're going to use the light meter again and you know, forget about the guide number. We have this little baby softbox. This is a EasyBox Speedlight 2. Lastolite EasyBox Speedlight 2. Do you just push this, I guess? Yep, you push this open. There we go, fancy. Now, softbox. A box of soft, right? Basically what this is, is it's going to do two things for us. Right, it's got diffusion here, and then diffusion in front. The light is going to hit the diffusion, it's going to spread out. It's so then gonna hit the front diffusion and spread out more. We are effectively making our tiny little light source, which is the speed light, larger, making it this big, right? The larger your light source, the softer it is, the more gentle it's going to be on the face. Um, wait, I actually did plenty of times we talk about that, so I will ignore it for now. This, this ratchet is on, which is kind of fun. Um, there's a lot of engineering there. OK, we're going to put this in really close. Why? The, so the bigger something is, the softer it is, which generally means it's going to be more gentle. Things get bigger the closer they get to you, right? If you ever got hit in the face with something, you know what I'm talking about, right? It gets real big when it gets real close to you. I didn't look at you. <laughs> so right, so we don't need to be shooting at F22 anymore because that was just showing off. So I'm going to dial back to 250 at f8. I don't need to do another test because I know nothing's changed. So 250 at f8 will get me a dark space. This flash is still just shooting that one, right? So this is just this. Questions, thoughts, concerns? Nothing. All right, good. We're killing it. All right, let's put it real close. Let's do it set style. <laughs> Small light, super close. Small light, super close, exactly. All right. No, don't worry, I won't, I won't do it as good as you. All right, so. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the, the light source. I'm going to get my meter. It's not my meter, it's a spaces meter. My meter is at my studio. Yeah, there we go. We're going to want to bounce, though, so that's why I gave it a little bit of... I'm kind of feathering the light a bit low because I know I'm going to want to add a reflector because it's going to be not going to be perfect. All right. All right, so I'm going to put it right up in his grill. We're going to fire it. We're f 11 and a half, so we'll go to, what are we at, like a quarter power? So we'll go to, yeah, 8, 3. Oh, 6, 9. All right, that's close enough. Close enough for this. All right. We're going to start here. We're going to add a reflector. It's always important to take one picture first, then add the reflector. That way the client will go, oh. <laughs> so we'll do a test shot. Looking like a boss. Here we go. Did I set my camera back at F8? I think I did. There he is. Oh, yeah, moody. That looks pretty nice, right? There he is. I got the box in the corner of the shot so I can remember how I did it. I always get my lights in the shot. That way I remember how I did it. Um, he looks pretty good. Let's add the reflector under his chin. Although I'm kind of thinking we want it on the side. But we'll, yeah, oh, look at that. Oh, 
That's an advanced move right there. <laughs> I don't know if we want to do that in the basic class. That's, that's a little bit, bit too much. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. Here we go. We're focusing. I'm not level. And there we go. Nice and filled in. It looks pretty. He's like, well, and I left it. It fades off to dark in the back. So if he wants to add that in the corner of his high school yearbook picture, he can do that. But let's make, let's formalize this, right? We're almost, yeah, we're, we're just, but, oh, we're going super fast. I am fast today. Am I going too fast? Okay, I'm not slowing down, I'm just asking. All right, so, it's like when you go to the dentist and they're like, tell me if it hurts, and then you tell them and they don't stop. They don't, they don't care. All right, this is cool. This looks decent, but I'd like to give them some more three-dimensionality. Let's make like a more formal portrait. This way I can charge Fudo for it. All right, so, uh, let's use a B2, yeah. We never use that. Maybe we'll do like a hair light. Uh, yeah, it should have an optical sleeve. Yep. Yep. I said yes, but I don't know. It's always important to say yes, then just make it happen. That's really the key. So we're going to use this guy. I didn't bring any accessories for it, really, except for the giant softbox. So I guess that's what we're going to use. Or we'll just use a bare head. Yeah, yeah let's use a big softbox. What All right. Bare head? Yeah. Right, we'll start with the bare head. Yeah. Right? Questions? Somebody has a question. No? Yes. Uh-oh. Uh -huh. Okay, so you've seen setups with two or three speed lights. You mean like they use them doing different stuff or all together? Like together, but on different stands, like so you can have one here, one here. Okay. So, yeah, if you're going to... Okay, so let me talk about speed lights for a second because I'll, I'll talk about the question. So basically, you've seen setups where people use a lot of speed lights. We're about to mix our lights because I only have the ones... Actually, I have like... Well, not mine. There's about a dozen of them in the box, but I'm not going to pull those out. Can you do regular full, full on studio setups with multiple lights and everything using speed lights only? Yes. Though, if you're going to buy the more professional speed lights that are going to last you, and if you're going to know that that's what you're going to do, like that's your career and you want to shoot those kind of portraits, it may not be the most cost effective thing. Because a good speed light, you know, one that's going to last you, like let's say a Nikon one or whatever, is going to cost you about four or $500. So you start having a bunch of those, you can buy full on strobes for not much more. So think about that when you're buying. But if you don't know, if you're just starting, get a speed light. You want to get a second one? Get another one. Why not? You can even buy inexpensive ones as extra ones. You definitely, definitely can use a bunch of them. The main thing is you need a way to, to, to fire them. Um, and in this system, I think there's, I think I saw four channels, four uh, zones. I'm going to say this four. I don't know. Five. five zones, which means in theory, I could have five off-camera lights, all and a light on camera if I want, all firing at different exposures, right? I can have as many as I want, but five areas of control, which is really good, actually. Um, in this case, we're going to mix it. This has an optical slave in it, is what it's called. So when we fire this one, it goes off automatically. They're not really talking other than that. Um, you know, they're like friends, but not that close. Yeah. Uh, did we meter it? I did. All right. D Dave metered it, and I trust him, so... We're going to see what we get. We're, 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 now using, we're adding a, a separation or hair light to this. It's on exposure. So. It's on exposure. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's interesting. So what's interesting here is that the speed light is, is not consistently the same power, or free to moved, or both. Wait, did, did it drop? Turn that off? Did it drop? Or it dropped again. Mm. Apparently, one feature of this light is that it changes power on you. If you turn that off, it does. Uh, I didn't turn it off, though. Yeah, it's, uh... So let's turn it back to where it was. I did. All right, we're going to turn it back. I'll take it Hey, listen, for 65 bucks or whatever it costs, what do you want to expect? LED strobes. I have no idea what that means. Okay. All right, so now we've got two lights going on, right? We're getting more traditional. We've got... A, a, a nice light on his face, which is a speed light, right? An expensive speed light. And then we have our pro photo light in the back giving us a rim. It's a, it's a bit hard. It's a little hot, but I actually like it hot on guys. Um, and also, if you have dark hair, sometimes it looks good. It just depends on the person. Because remember, any kind of a hard light is going to add texture to the face. That's why I'm zooming in and seeing it. Uh, I think it's good. If you thought it was too much, you could turn it down. But you're not up here, are you? So too bad. Uh, <laughs> no, we could turn it down a little bit. I know Dave thinks it's too much, so... Dave likes his, his, his separation light to be very subtle. 
I like to hit you in the head with it. Different strokes for different folks, yep. And then we'll use a little fill action. Hold on, are we giving them too much? Nah, we'll do it. All right. Good. All right. Now we've got turn down backlight a little bit, a little bit of fill. We got the, the light in the corner of the shot, so I know how I lit it. Um, and we're good, right? That looks pretty decent, standard kind of shot. I could do it with two speed lights, sure. In fact, this is a bare head. Um, the Profoto has kind of a nice look with nothing on it. I don't think I'd just throw a bare speed light back here. I'd probably want to modify it. But, you know, uh, depends on the speed light, I suppose. Like an A1 would be good. Also Profoto. Uh, questions? Or like a Quantum? Yes? So could you use the bigger softbox for the flash? <gasps> so would it make a difference? Oh, wow. Look at you. Can I use a bigger softbox? I don't know. Can we use a bigger softbox? <laughs> well, would it make a difference? Let's do it. Yeah, I've, it will. And the, here's the thing, right? Larger, larger light is going to have two effects. One is it's going to be softer, meaning our shadow transitions are going to be more gentle. But also coverage, right? So if I put a big soft light, a big light close to somebody, it's going to cover more of them. So yeah, 100%. Now they do make adapters to put a small flash into one, this softbox. I do not have that, and so that means I can't do anything because if you don't buy stuff, you can't do anything in life. <laughs> Or I can just hold it, right? There we go. Dave's going to put it in the front. Now it's going to eat up some light, so we're going to want to do a test. Feels like it's a bit too close. So it's a little close, a little bit, smidge. <laughs> it is going to eat more light. Why is it going to eat more light? Because it's bigger. All right, there we go. There right, we go. Yeah, not much actually, surprisingly. Yeah, only, only two-tenths of a stop. There we go. Huh, okay, whatever, that's fine. Close enough. Uh, all right, we got the bigger box. By the way, if you're ever like doing a shoot and somebody's really aggravating, like, a, like the client brings somebody with them or whatever, you just make them hold the thing like this. Can you hold this? <laughs> it's a good way to get rid of them. All right, so. That's not what I'm doing with Dave, just, you know. All right, so there we go, right? Bigger box, more coverage, right? See the difference? Also, let's get in the background a little bit more, right? Right, see the difference? So yeah, it makes a difference. Bigger box, more coverage, softer light. Is it better? Not necessarily, it depends on what you're doing, right? There's, there's something to be said for Although, actually, technically, it would be this and this. Yeah. Someday I will learn how to do this. Oh, nope, that's how you open Photoshop. <laughs> oh, my god. OK, I've never used a computer before. I could, I could what just happened there? All right, nope. Hey. How do you bring that back? <laughs> I think I lost my, my computer. Hey, it's great demo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think you would go into that mode first, and then you click on it. There it is. All right. And can I get them side by side? Probably not. All right. I'm going to sit down and learn how to use this. Actually, they keep sending me emails for focus seminars, and I have yet to watch one yet. So sorry, Hasselblad. Come and teach me. Anyways, that's the difference. Looks pretty good, right? You can see the difference in the light in his face. So it gets softer. It comes around better. And also keep in mind that when you're shooting portraits or any kind of work, the larger the, the light that you use, the more you can charge. <laughs> right? So. You also charge more per light. So you got to figure out, is it worthwhile to use a lot of small ones and charge that way, or use one big one and charge that way? It depends on the client. You know, we got to work it out. Yes, any questions online? No, uh, let's keep going then. Well, they're, they're kind of like, um, they thought you never put point of speed light directly at someone. Never point of speed light directly at somebody. Well, you just did, so you but I just did it because that's how I roll. <laughs> OK, so the reason why people say certain rules, let's go over rules that people say that Whatever. Don't point a speed light right at somebody. So why is somebody saying that, right? It's not that, like when you're learning, it's good to have kind of standards, right? For people to say, hey, when you want to light somebody, you put the light here. Now, I'll tell you that when I'm shooting a portrait or whatever, I put the light where, do you know where I put it? it looks best. That's where it, right, where it looks best. I literally move the light around until it looks the way I want it to look, and then I take the picture. 
right? But when you're learning, where is that place, right? You don't know, you're learning, right? So we give people standards, put it at 45 degrees, put it overhead, there's butterfly, there's long, there's short, there's all this other junk. That's why people give you these rules. But ultimately, if you, don't, if you understand why they're saying that, you can actually use it or not use it, right? So don't point a speed light right at somebody. They're probably saying that because it's so small and it's gonna produce a really hard light and it's probably gonna be a little bit uneven. But if you want hard, uneven light, what's the best way to do it? Point the speed light right at them. Like, why not, right? Once I put that speed light in something or bounce it off something or do whatever, it's no longer pointing it directly at them. So once I'm in a softbox, it's now a softbox, right? Um, yeah, I don't often point a speed light directly at somebody. Uh, it's not typically the way I light, but sometimes it can work. In fact, it'll work for, let's do the thing where we do the, the one light for the two light thing. Right? So we're going to take the light and we're going to make a hair light out of it and we're going to bounce back the, the speed light. So we'll work with one speed light again. Right? We've got the speed light and this is a, a way, this is one time where you might want to, we should put it over there maybe? Or this one? We'll put it here? Okay. All right, so we've only got our one light, right? Actually, this is almost, it's like a dirtier version, not dirtier in that way, uh, a dirtier version of the video I did this week actually, I think for Adorama. Basically, we only have our one light source, and we're going to use it as our hair light, right? Because the way that light works, remember I mentioned the inverse square law before? Somebody probably Googled it. Not you guys, because you don't have any way to do that. Um, if, if my light is here, and Frito is looking at it, and I want to give him a hair light, this hair light can never be that bright, punchy hair light. The reason for that is the light has to travel here to my bounce card, and then back to his head, right? So it's it's not gonna be bright enough. It's just not the way it is, right? But knowing that I want my hair light to be brighter anyways, and the fact that in, in his case, his hair is darker than his skin tone, if he turns the other way, now this is going to be brighter than this, right? Just by the nature of it. So I can use that to my advantage, right? I'm using that uh, knowledge that you shouldn't just point it over to my advantage. So what we're gonna do is aim it slightly over his head at the card. It's gonna bounce off, it's gonna hit his grill, and it's gonna light him up. I guess a light meter would be useful. There it is. And we'll turn this guy off. You know, we'll turn that guy off. I like how long this is. I don't think I mind this as long. So how do you get rid of hot spots? Well, hot spots generally come from uneven uh, light that is that is not uh, diffused enough. So if you were at a hot spot on somebody's face uh, with light, the way you'd get rid of it would be adding diffusion to your light. Uh, oh, that's only uh, 2.02. So I need a lot of juice if we got it. Five, six, one. Eight, one. All right. Done. All right, so just going to hold the card. I'm going to come back in with the, with the light. So, yeah, if somebody's got hot spots, like let's say they're sweaty or whatever, um, hand them a rag. Powder, right? I mean, I don't know. No, the thing is that highlights, I'll talk about this in a second. Let me just get the shot first. I do know, actually. Uh, if you had my shoes... Bam. Yeah, they're on sale too. Can you believe it? Yeah. Sparkly Converse. I was looking for gold ones, but they didn't have them. Can you imagine if I had gold Converse? That'd be the awesome. Oh, boy. I am Daniel. Hmm. Dave's, Dave's reading the back of his head. How much is it? 16? 16? Yeah, 16 on the back of his head. It's going to be hot. Yeah. Probably too hot, but we're going to try it. Remember, too, that if things come out bad, you can always make it black and white. All right, here we go. I'm going to get his whole body first, but then I'm going to show you how to fix it. Well, not his whole body, but a portion of his body. OK. You don't have to fix it because it came out perfect. Let me click this off. Let me click that. Uh-oh, what did I do? Two. There we go. All right, there he is, right? That's not terrible. Uh, the, the depth that over there he has his hair is reflecting. Do they still have depth? Do you use depth in your hair? Is that what you got in there? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, it's depth. Yep, I knew it. So I used to use that when I had hair. All right, so, right, his face is lit. We've got a nice even exposure. We've got his hair, right? His hair is two stops overexposed. But guess what? It's darker than his skin tone, so it works. And the depth is a little bit shiny. <laughs> okay, easy as that, right? Using the light that we have, knowing how it works, right? I know it's a hard light, right? So what? I'm going to bounce it then, because bouncing the light makes it bigger, right? 
bigger makes it softer. Also, it's going to diffuse the light, right? Diffusing the light means send it scattering it, right? So when it hits the board, it scatters. That's going to help diffuse it, which also helps with any highlights. Um, and that's why, I mean, Freo just has perfect skin, but what can we say? All right, good, that's a good question. So if we're gonna use multiple lights, how do we set the exposure? So let's talk about that and do it at the same time. Let's use all three lights. Why not? Three point lighting, right? It's usually good idea to set up one extra light and just don't use it. You know, charge for it, but don't use it. Like background light? Background light? All right, so here we go. We're gonna use three lights. We're gonna light the background with the B1. The B1. We're gonna light, we're gonna use this as a hair light, I guess. Oh, we're going to do the same shot. Oh, all right. Dave's like, I don't want to do anything different. <laughs> we'll do this now the right way. OK, so the reason why it's the right way or the wrong way, if you're going to talk like that, is because this is now going to give us control. right? We did it that way, but what if we didn't like the exposure? Well, on some level, eh, I mean, there's not much you can do about it. You could move this back further if it was too bright. Using the inverse square law and math and you know the physics and stuff, it would work. But uh, nobody wants to do math. It's already like, too late in the seminar. So, <laughs> Actually, I did do a video on this if you're really interested in that kind of concept because it's really something you should play with. Like, If you get a light, mess around with the idea of your subject. And it doesn't have to be a person. It can be anything you want to put there. The difference between your subject, the distance to your light, to your subject, to your background. Messing with that ratio. That will change the way the background looks. And you can go all the ways from making the background look the way it looks, like in this case, light gray, all the way to black. Um, in the video, we do it with a white background. So we make a white background with one light, and then we make the background dark, or and also actually completely black, I think. So it was a while ago, but I'm pretty sure we made it black. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to use three lights, and I'm going to talk about how to meter each one to get the correct exposure, right? And that's how we're going to do it. We're going to do a little light meter-ish action. Turn them away from the background. Oh, nice. No, you're still going to look. OK, so we've got a couple things going on here. First of all, we're going to get our lights generally in position. What Dave's done here is he set the lights to point towards me because he loves lens flare. No, the reason why he did this is because if they're pointing like this, some of them is going to hit the background, and we want to light the background separately. right? One thing that's important with using multiple lights is you want to try to not have them overlap or overlap them, depending on the style you're going for. But generally, if you can get them all in their own zones, it'll be easier to set them up. What and this actually came up a lot last week when we did character portraits, because I kept getting the question like, where is the correct exposure? What part of the person should be exposed? Well, I mean, in the case of a portrait, in, in this portrait, I would say that the, the light that should be correctly exposed is the light on his face, right? The hair light could be brighter or darker, depending on what we want to go for. The background could be brighter or darker, depending on what we want to go for. But in a standard portrait, we usually want the face to look the way it looks, right? That's not always the case, but in this case, uh, it is. OK, so all right, so Dave's going to meter this to the exposure that we're setting the camera, right? So f8. This one should read f8. He's going to, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. What I generally do, I don't think he's doing that right now, maybe is. Um, I usually turn only one light on at a time and get them all metered to where I think they should be. So let's say. On exposure, maybe this one's a smidge brighter, although knowing Dave, it's probably on exposure. Um, and then the background, is, he's probably going to get them all on exposure. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. He's going all on exposure to start with. So, but, but let's say that we wanted this one to be brighter. We would meter this one to f11, right? Make sense so far? Yeah. So we do each light separately. Then once we get them all set up, we then meter everything together because there will be some overlap and we may want to tweak from there. But usually I'll take a shot at that point. When I'm learning uh, something, like testing a new lighting technique that I might use, what I'll usually do, or if I'm shooting something that's complex, like let's say something that's very shiny or weird or a lot of product photography, I'll often actually shoot each light separately um, and then combine them. Because then I really know what each light is doing. Plus, whenever, you know, then you can like turn them on and off to like show the client, that, you know, they'll be like, oh, that's pretty good. Then you turn off like one of the lights, like, oh, wow. It's like, yeah, that's right. You didn't see that, did you? All right, so we're putting the, the, the B1 on the background. It's just a bare head. It's going to blast the background with light. Uh, at that distance, I don't think it'll be super even, but it'll be even enough for what we're doing. Remember that every light that you have is going to have a spread, 
So keep that in mind too. Particularly uneven, do almost like a circle, but not quite a circle because we don't have a grid. I didn't ask for a lot of tools for this one because I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. So now we're metering the background light. We're also setting that light at f8, right? Each of our lights is going to be metered to f8 because our camera is set at f8, exactly. If it was set at something else, then you set it at that. We're, we're going on exposure. It's a good idea to think about your lighting when you start. Once you have your camera set, right? Because everybody thinks a lot about the numbers and stuff. Once you know where you're going to shoot based on whatever, like in this case, it's getting rid of the light in the room. In your case, it might be to get the depth of field you want, whatever, right? Once you know your exposure, think about everything else as either on exposure, under exposure, or over exposure. No longer matters what the exposure is. It matters whether or not the light is on, over, or under, right? So if I want my background to be dark, I want to set it under the exposure. If I want my hair light to be bright, I want to set it over the exposure, usually. All right, we're going no background light to start with. Uh, and we got these two set up? Yep. Okay, so both these lights are set on exposure. Let's see what it looks like. I think I broke my camera. I think I had like the live view thing going on and it was like getting all funky. Don't I press things with my nose for some reason. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I broke my camera, guys. Don't worry about it. Uh, hmm. I'm put a new battery in. I think I may have killed the battery because I was running the camera. I have another battery somewhere. All right, guys. See you next week once I charge the battery. Okay. Hopefully this one is charged. I see a little H. That's a good sign. H means healthy. All right, F8, 250, 100 eyes. Lights all set at F8. Frito set at F8. Okay. And there we go. All right. Right? Yeah, so we're going to bring up our background light because now it's to taste, right? Okay, we're going to turn it up, what, half stop? Two, so, two thirds up. And let me go a third, down on a third down on that one. Okay, so we're adjusting our lights to our taste now, right? Because now we're trying to make a more or less complete shot. Here we go. Right, yes, exactly. So now if you were going to be making notes, right, you would say, okay, this light now is, I mean, you could also re-meter it at the end to make sure you have the exact numbers, but all that really matters is this was F8, but now it's up a third of a third? Yeah. One third of a stop. And this went down. And this went, no, sorry, this, went down a third this, this went down a third of a stop. This went up two thirds. This means that when you show up somewhere else and you decide you want to shoot at F11 or F5.6 or F4 or whatever, it, this is all the same, right? This is why we're thinking about it this way. Now the background light is set, what, on exposure to start? Yeah. On exposure to start, we're adding the third light in. Remember, you get paid for a light. It closed from on exposure to right off. Oh, oh wow. Okay, that's kind of groovy. You look like kind of like an evil uh, guy, scientist. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> yeah, you could look a little bit that way. Actually, okay, do that. But I also want you to look. I actually think if you looked, what's that? Um. What is my white balance? That is a good question. It is set at uh, daylight, which in this system is 55. Uh, I could make it a little warmer or cooler. I actually like it where it was. It's good. It's chill. The background looks cool. Frida looks cool. You're a cool guy, man. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna change my focus spot. Somehow when I turned on the level, I also turned on the thing that gives you a thousand focus spots. So now I, it's like, there used to be like five of them. Oh, okay, that's a little bit more moody. I actually think I like them looking back towards the background. Actually, let's use a reflector. Yeah. yeah. We can count the reflector as a light, meaning that we can charge for it. I'm not gonna hold it because that's not how I do it. I'm a two-fisted shooter. You're in a little bit, Dave. Good. Nice. 
little reflector action. Now he's filled in. All right, so now we've got, now again, talking about exposure, right? The, the proper exposure is like in this area here, right? This side of his face is a little bit underexposed, but that's to give him some three dimensionality. It kind of comes down to what you want, right? Um, if, you, if you wanted the front side of his face more exposed, you would have to put the light over there at this point. You wouldn't be able to, to do it this way. Or we could maybe bounce the hair light into his. Can you, what if you reflect the hair light into his? The front? Yeah. Yeah, like here, yeah. So yeah, exactly, we can fill with the hair light essentially. Let's see if that works. I don't know if it's coming far enough. We'll try it. I'm scooting under the thing. Good. I have a weird crop because so I'm just trying to see if this will work. Oh yeah, that fills in a little bit. He's, he makes me go to sleep. <laughs> well, we can see here that like that's a little bit darker. Here we're actually bouncing. Remember, I have two lights, right? So in the first one, Dave's bouncing the softbox light back in. In the second one, where he's meditating, he's bouncing the speed light back in, right? Two different lights at two different powers, right? Let's do the speed light with the silver. Well, actually, yeah, whatever. We'll do the speed light with the silver because we're wild like that. I'm just guessing. When he's yeah, he's guessing because we can't see. Although I could always pop it, I guess, to look. Yeah, it looks right. Here we go. So I'm looking through the camera when I did that to see if I see the light bouncing back onto his face. And I did. Yeah, he looks, now he's looking really evil. He's like, aha, I have a plan. I shall take over the world. <laughs> so now we've got all the lights working together. There's a lot of things you could do. Again, Dave put the light really close to the background. Actually, when you metered, I didn't say this even though he said it, is it's on exposure in the center, and then it fades off to what? Almost completely off, like a stop. Two to three stops off when you get out to the edge. So it's fading, right? If you were trying to get an even background, you would just meter the whole background so that it is on exposure, you know, or however you want to shoot. That would require multiple lights, usually, to get it even. And for that, you can charge. charge. Exactly. <laughs> so there you go. So once we have that down, we see how that works. Simple enough, you know how it works. Questions, thoughts, concerns? Yes? So when we see that his eye, I get the idea. So now, can someone else be sort of projected in that? Or as in, so he looks at, let's say, your friend. And uh, can we capture him on the eyeball? Oh, that's interesting. OK, so. If you, if you, you're, 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 you're a little bit of a strange guy. I'm just going to say that up front. I am. Okay, so can you have somebody else reflected in his eye, like for an effect, like Batman or something? Well, I mean, the simplest way to do it would be to have the person here because this is the way the light is. You could do that if you lit him properly because remember, that has to be light. What you're seeing is a reflection, right? So in order to reflect, remember that, Think about this. If you are in a room with a mirror, right? You probably have mirrors in your house. I don't know. Maybe you're a vampire. I don't know. So you go into the room, right? And you see the mirror, but you don't see yourself, right? And then you move to a certain angle and you see yourself. And then you don't see yourself again. Same thing if you're looking at somebody else in the mirror. So you can do it. An eye is kind of like a mirror. So you got to play with angles, but it's possible. Weirdo. I mean, yeah, it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, you can totally do it. Well, when you see that a lot, it's usually the photographer reflected, and that's usually because they're standing in front of the light. Yeah. That's the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Um, so what you would do is put a, like a big fill light here or something, yeah, if you like that effect. What? Seth wants to do it, but we're not going to do it today. That'll be, next, that'll be advanced flash photography, which is what we're doing next week. Are we ready to wrap? We're a little early. Does anybody want to see anything else before we stop? Is that basic enough? Does anybody have any questions? Does something not make sense? Now's the time to ask. Online? Uh, Offline? I mean, I don't know. Right. This is it. Yes. Uh oh. Okay, then don't ask if it's off the subject. <laughs> okay. With the speed lights, if you're taking a picture of something that has a reflection, how do you get rid of the reflections? Okay, so if you're shooting something that is reflective, like glasses, let's say? No, not glasses, no. Okay. 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 This is, I'm going to answer this question because it's a very vague question, which is good because when you're learning, you have vague questions. If there's a reflection, how do you get rid of it? I mean, what I just explained, to get a reflection in the eye, you do the opposite. Basically, light bounce goes in a straight line, right? Which means that if something is reflecting on something else, generally, you have to just change your angle or the angle of the light or possibly the angle of the subject. All that being said, I will say this. This is notorious for clients. You need reflections and you need shadow to make things look three-dimensional. 
you don't need ugly reflections of a softbox, but you need some reflections. So if you're photographing, let's say, my shoes, <laughs> right? They're sparkly silver, yes. Be jealous, <laughs> right? If there's no reflections, they won't look that way, right? If you're photographing a, a, a spoon or like a, what would be reflective? Uh, an iPhone, right? You need that glisten in it, right? Because if you don't have that, it won't look reflective. And in fact, it is reflective, right? <laughs> <laughs> Can you address what this joke is on charging more for a light? Seriously? <laughs> no. I cannot, I cannot address that question. <laughs> can I address whether or not you can actually charge more per light? Yes, you can. You should always charge more when you use more equipment. <laughs> That's 100% the truth. Yes. So Sam, I'm shooting, I shoot a lot of crowds. Uh oh. Set up something like this remote with like a softbox, or mm -hmm. would I use the flashlight with the Mm -hmm. sort of walk around and grab okay, so let's say you're walking around with a flash, right? And actually, this brings up a good point, which is not even answering your question, but I'm going to do it anyways. So if you're, let's say you're shooting in an environment. Let's say you're shooting a party or a crowd or a, you know, a reception or something. One of the things that people say when they say they don't like flash is they basically don't like the idea that when the flash is on your camera and you make the picture, the rest of the room goes completely black, which is exactly what I did when we walked in here, right? Because I wanted to shoot a portrait, which is a different thing. If you are shooting into, if you're shooting in a room, there's a few different ways to do it. Some people like to set up strobes in the room. Um, you'll get that a lot with more, uh, uh, you know, certain wedding photographers and stuff will do that. Uh, they'll put some remote flashes in the room and they'll put them in the corners or whatever and they'll have them fire to give the overall room light. That's gonna be a little more complex. It's gonna cost you more money. It's gonna take time to do it. So that answers the question that just happened online. Yes, you would charge more in that case, right? You're not gonna walk into a wedding with just a flash on your camera and charge the same as you would if you set up 10 strobes in the room and have them going off and stuff like that. This is a bigger production. You're gonna make sure that you do it. So if you're uh, 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 you know, uh, doing something more simple where it's just you and, and you know, maybe the budget isn't so high, you certainly can have a flash on your camera. What you're probably going to want to do is think about the light in the space the same way that I did, right? Except instead of saying, what do I need to set my camera at to get rid of the light? You're gonna say, what do I need to set my camera at to make the light look the way I want it to look, right? So let's say that I wanna do that, because there's not a whole lot of light in here. Um, let's say that I wanted to use, do we have time for this? Yeah, we do. We have time for this, Frida. Just sit here for me. We always have time for that. You can sit, but just, yeah, with your back to the, thank you. Right here? Yeah, with your back to the crowd. Yeah. Let's say that I'm shooting this picture of, of Frida and I want the room to be in the shot, you guys, right? So I'm gonna to think to myself, well, what do I need for exposure out there? The simplest way to do it is to look through the camera itself and look at its meter, or you can use a handheld light meter, however you wanna do it. Um, and I'm gonna dial in, let's say I'm gonna go all the way wide open, because that's the easiest way to do it. I'm gonna go to a shutter speed that I think I can handhold at, which is about 125. I've had a lot of coffee, and I'm still showing really underexposed, so I'm, now I'm gonna hit my ISO, right? I can just touch screen so I can do that. I'm gonna do my ISO to 1600, I think that should probably do it. Looking through my meter, that's still showing a smidge underexposed. We'll go 3,200. That seems awful high. It's probably not going to look very good. All right. All right, we'll try that. With 3,200 ISO, we are 3.2, 125. Right? There we go. You guys are there. I can see him in Adorama. He looks beautiful, right? Done. I'll send you a bill. <laughs> He's looking right? great at the audience. <laughs> yeah. Right? So here he is. He's like, why can't I look at them? Okay, but here we are, right? Now, what are you adding to this? Because this is what everybody else in the room is getting with their phone, right? But you're, you're the pro or whatever, right? You want to get it better. So you're going to add some light, right? So we'll add, we'll just keep it, we'll just use that light because we have it. Let's use the pro photo because I want to cheat. You could do it with the speed light too, but hey, I think the pro photo will be nicer. I'm done using the speed light. Yeah, exactly. I'm done with the speed light. All right, so I'm gonna put my little profile attachment on here. Now, I set my camera at 3.2, right? Which means I gotta set my strobe at 3.2. So I'm gonna turn this on. Is that on? Oh, I gotta put it onto the air remote because it's on, it's on optical. 
Okay, we are at group C. Okay. All right, that works. We've lost the meter. There it is. Nope. Where is the meter? There it is. All right. I've got my light meter. Now, obviously, this is where TTL flash comes in when you're doing parties. TTL flash is going to go on top of your camera. It's going to meter by itself. You won't have to grab a light meter to do this. But we're not using a TTL flash. All right, so I'm getting a 5.6, which is too much. So I'm going to come down. I went down too far, but I want to rather be low than high. Oops. Nope. Oh, no, I turned down B. Even though Dave told me it was C, I turned down B. Are alien bees good beginner strobes? Are alien bees good beginner strobes? No, absolutely not. Alien bees are terrible. Jeez. And the reason why alien bees, and I'm going to tell you why they're terrible. Uh, even though they come in cool colors, which is, you know, cool. They're not flying. They are inconsistent, which to me is a problem if you are learning, right? If you, if you are using an inconsistent system and you're learning photography, it's going to be very confusing to you what's happening, right? I would much rather see somebody invest in like a used, uh, I don't know, Speedatron or, or Dynalite or one of these like old school companies that is going to be consistent even if it doesn't have all the shiny features and doesn't recycle really fast or whatever. Um, there, and, I, and I say this, I've used them. I'm not just being a snob. I've used Alien Beast. I literally had to throw it away after I used it one time with my pro photo and saw that light's color change in every shot while the pro photo was completely the same. So, yeah. That's my bias, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Oh, I forgot to set the ISO on the light meter. Okay, that makes sense. This is why we do test shots. I was just testing you guys. Oh yeah, of course, because that metered at uh, 568, which is of course too. I actually don't think this dial's down low enough, but we're gonna find out. We're doing it. I don't think I've ever tried 3200 ISO in my life. <laughs> yeah, I might just have to go to a slower shutter. Yeah, I have shot 3200 black and white from those Dave, thank you. All right, I'm getting F8 all the way turned down, which is not working for me, so I'm gonna adjust my shutter speed. Okay, so now I've gotta do math. You guys excited? So that was all fine with my 3200, but my strobe is too powerful. I can't get to what I want, right? I'm at F8, so in order to get myself to the right place, I gotta go back into my camera, and I'm gonna go back to F8, which is as low as I can go. How low can you go? F8. So I'm gonna to go to F8, and then I'm going to go to my ISO, Press my little ISO button, and I'm gonna go down to 400. That seems about right. right. Let me go back here, ISO 400. So again, I'm coming into this with the idea that I have to match these. That's really the key here. All of it is just a matter of lining it up. Yeah, and then I'll figure out my shutter speed. I'm gonna go 15th of a second. Okay, four three still. All right, so I'm going to go ISO 200. Wow, OK. All right, I'm ISO 200. All right, so 3200 to 200 is four stops, right? So four stops would be a 15th, if I did my math right, which I probably didn't. So here we go. Ah, perfect. Now, I can bring my ISO back up. Apparently my math was faulty, which is good. It's always good when my math is faulty. I'm now at ISO 800, getting there. 16. There we go. All right, now let's get a better composition. Okay, so now I'm at 15th of a second. I am 1 15th of a second, F8 at ISO 1600. Right? Now I am matching the exposure in the room, right? You guys are lit up not by the flash so much. It's certainly at around back there is not lit up by the flash. You guys are lit up because the light is in the room, right? With no flash, oops. You all look like this. Right? 
So it flashes it in the people in the front a tiny, tiny bit. But see, there's the difference, right? Fill light. That's what we're doing. They're bringing in the fill. That's what you got to do in a party. It's not going to be the prettiest light in the world, it's not, even with the big flash on it, right? It's going to be very, what's that? Always bring fill to the party. Yeah, always bring fill to the party, yeah. So that's basically what you got to do. It's just a matter of balancing the room, right? So that was a little more complex, but uh, that makes sense. Now I completely lost y'all. Yes? I have one question. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's a good question. I did a whole video on that. See that? I thought you said you watched my videos, man. What's going on? <laughs> no. So what are you paying for, right? This is actually a question I get a lot. Um, you know, recognition, being cool. No, none of that. What you're paying for is reliability and consistency in color and in power. Also longevity on some level in resale value, but that just as far as using it, right? In other words... If you have a cheaper flash, let's say, whatever, what they just mentioned, alien views, but we'll talk about speed lights, they're not going to be consistent, right? So that might not matter. If you just go around and shoot some pictures here and there, um, you know, whatever, right? If it doesn't fire every time or the power is different or the color shifts or whatever, okay, you're learning, whatever. But the second that you sit down to shoot something that needs to be consistent and every frame is a little bit different, so you got to go into them and change them, because I'd rather have all my frames be off by half a stop than every frame off by a tiny little bit. Because everything off by the same at least tells me I can fix them all at once, right? I've went out and shot 100 pictures. I don't want to have to go to each one and, oh, this one up an eighth, this one down an eighth, oh, this one a little bit green, this one a little magenta. And that's what you're paying for. Consistency and reliability in color and in power, right? That's basically it. Not to say you shouldn't use cheap stuff. I mean, I just did. I just used the cheap thing. It can do it. You can get it. it it's still powerful. Um, I'd still prefer or recommend a cheap small flash to like an LED panel or cheap LED panel um, because that's going to be better color. It's going to, you know, overall usually, and it's definitely more power. So, and those are usually things people look at at the beginning. Other questions? Yes. Uh, how do you deal with uh, I don't. client with a uh, shaved head? How do I deal with the client with a shaved head? Are you asking me that because you want a picture of yourself? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Here's the thing. Okay, so... I mean, you probably noticed this. I love that the guy with the shaved head asked me how to, what do you mean, because it's shiny? Yeah, okay, so here's the thing. This is going to sound whatever. I mean, it's going to sound obvious, but listen, if somebody has a shiny head because they've shaved it or whatever, or a shiny forehead or whatever, I'm going to say something to them about it. I'm going to blot it down with powder. I'm going to use a more diffused light source. I'm going to, you know, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, if you are a bald guy, you know you're bald, right? I mean, nobody's telling you that, right? So, I mean, people feel like they can't say something. Telling the client stuff like that is important. I mean, you know, be tactful. Uh, but I always carry uh, in my kit, uh, my portrait thing that I bring around, these little um, rice paper uh, sheets that have a little bit of powder on them. They're neutral powder, and I bust that out and I say, "I'm doing your makeup, Mr. CEO," and I do it. I mean, you know, whatever. They they don't they want a good picture, right? That's what it comes down to. It's like, are you going to be like? oh, don't put powder on me, or are you going to be like, I want a good picture, right? That's what it comes down to. Um, but certainly doing things like using a s single small speed light is going to make it worse. So use a big light source. Big light source, diffused light source. That's going to help with your highlights and your shadows. Yes? What's a good beginner strobe if you don't like Okay, so what's a good beginner strobe if I don't like Alien B? Um, Ellen Chrome is really good. The D lights, yeah. right? Uh, the Ellen Chrome D lights are kind of not the best built lights in the world. They're not going to last you forever, but they get a good flash tube. They're consistent. You're buying into a better brand. You know, that's what I recommend over, over something like an Alien B. If you've got a little bit more money, you've got things like, uh, like Dynalite and, and Speedatron. Seth uses Speedatron. Seth hates Speedatron now because you love your Speedatrons. Listen, don't be afraid to buy a brand like Speedatron used. Like, you can buy them. Like, uh, my Profoto Acute Pack is something like 25 years old. A good strobe is going to last you a long, long time. Yeah, like, that's the thing. Old. Yeah, like, his, you can buy stuff for, that's old as long as it's a good brand, you know? Because the other thing that you get with better brands is the ability to have it fixed, you know? Like, people can fix Speedatrons. Like, Seth takes this bar all the time. He gets underneath, like, a mechanic. He rolls under it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying. Like, basically... <laughs> Yeah, that, that's, uh, if you're buying something new and you want mono lights and you want something that's consistent, I like Ellen Chrome. Um, I don't know what an Ellen B costs, but I think the D lights are probably a little bit cheaper, maybe right around the same price. If you can go one level up to, I think it's BX something, their next level up is, is, is actually pretty nice. It's a pretty significant uh, increase. But yeah, that's what I recommend.
if I'm recommending. I mean, I recommend everybody just buys Profoto, but not everybody can do that. Or Brian Collar. Yeah. Uh, questions? No. Okay, good. That was pretty good. Uh, that was basic Flash. Next week, I think, or I'm going to say it anyways, next week is advanced Flash. That's the fun stuff, right? We went through all the basics here. We talked about how to make an exposure. You guys understand how Flash works on some level. If you kind of missed something and you didn't feel like asking a question because you were nervous or whatever, we did record it. It's broadcast over the world on the World Wide Web. <laughs> the internet. It's on uh, Adorama TV, so you can watch it again. Um, and you can see my jokes are much funnier the second time, I guarantee. Um, thanks, Frito. Thanks, Seth. Dave. Inspire is coming up for the locals. Yes, hold on, you're going to tell me something. Yes. OK, so Inspire, if you guys are local, there's lots of events coming up at the end of June in, for Adorama. Check that out on our meetup. They send about 1,000 emails, so just follow through those and, and figure that out. Um, Mark Wallace and Gavin are going to be here. Uh, that's going to be awesome. I'm going to go sit on this. Anyways, if you want to know uh, more stuff that I'm doing, uh, follow me on YouTube, my YouTube channel, which is uh, Daniel Martin Photographer, but you can just type in 1,200 sessions, and it pops up. I do some fun stuff with Seth. We're planning something awesome. We don't know what it is yet, but we're planning it. We keep saying we're going to do something, so we're planning something awesome, right? Isn't that the steps of it? Um, yeah, so if there are any questions, you can put them in the video. I also go through the videos after and answer questions. So if you watch it again, you're still like, what? Uh, that. But next week's Advanced Flash, we're going to do like multi-pop and multiple exposure and jump around with flashes, and we're going to have all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah, I know you missed that one. Maybe we'll bring you back. All right, so it's going to be super fun. Come next week, same time, same place. The new show. The new show. Oh, that's right. Dave and Seth started a new show. What's it called? Rewind. Rewind. Uh, check it out. It, the first session was pretty awesome. Um, it was, it's on Adorama TV. It came out on Tuesday, I think. Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday it's going to be. So watch that. It's going to be really fun. Seth will stand there in a white t-shirt and Dave will have his jacket and I'll talk about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. So <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks. <laughs>